Okay, I just wanted to show you how I'm making my wire and uh, doing my coils for these uh, uh, plasma generators. So I'm just using ordinary household wire. I bought a spool of household wire down at Home Depot. And it seemed to be the cheapest wire down there that I could get. There was 14 gauge. Of course, when you use that wire, you gotta get rid of all the plastic. So you just, uh, first step is, is to get rid of the outside, uh, the outside plastic. And uh, I've already unrolled this down the hallway there and uh, I've got, uh, I've got, uh, I don't know, 60 feet of wire out that I've done and I've already taken the outside core off that. So now I got uh, the inside wire that's got the, the plastic on it. So what I, I'm just using a utility knife, pulling it through. And then this vise actually acts as a guide for the, the wire coming along. And then I just keep on pulling. I'll get a, a sort of a coil of wire in the floor behind me. And then when I go to take the other half of the plastic off there, it'll, uh, it'll, uh, I'll uh, uncoil it and wrap it up. Occasionally your knife slips and you gotta start again. But just a simple matter, holding the knife right and pulling it through. Comes off real easy. There we go. Now the next step is to, uh, to unravel that way. Now I go a little slower this because I want to don't want to get it all tangled up, so I'll probably start winding it on the bucket as I go. Now to get this manageable, what I do is I got a five-gallon plastic pail, and uh, we'll just roll up the the ground wire here. There's no light down there, so so I just uh, wrap it around the pail. Okay, so I got my copper wire that I rolled up upstairs. And uh, this copper wire that I get from Home Depot, the ground wire is actually a copper color. And uh, the wires in the white and black plastic, they are uh, they look more like brass, but uh, they nanocoat up good, so I'm using them. So what I've got here is a two by four stacked in, uh, or uh, clamped in the vise. I put my bucket over the 2x4 and then I come down here to where I'm going to make my coils. So the wire goes through. This is a, I forget who it was on the video there a week ago, showed us how to do this, but it works great. So I'm using 3 16 rod for my inside coil. Now we're just going to clamp the drill on there. Okay, so we got the wire cut feeding through this board here. That's going to put some tension on the wire. Uh, we bent over the edge there a bit, and it's just going to hook into the, the chuck there. Now we want to uh, we want to get this tight. So on this first one, I've already, I'm uh, going for about 160 turns, and I've already figured out I gotta have a, a 10 inch long coil. So, we just keep on going here till we get, get our 10 inches. But I've gotta unravel a bit here to get some uh, connection on this end, so I go, oh, 10 to 3 inch or something, just give it a little extra. So undo the chuck, and uh, now I got a, this coil has got a thread back on itself, so I need some extra wire to go back through. So, you know, one and a half times or two times the length of the coil, and then you can cut it off. And then on this end, I got to unravel it a bit. It's actually easier if you get that near the wood. What I'm looking for is uh, 10 inches here. It's, that's and that's it right there. So 
Now what we got to do is we got to stretch this coil out a bit to get some gap spacing in between. So I just put it back through a hole there, fold that up, go down here, grab this end, and give it a pull. So now I got it evenly spaced, more or less. You'll find that at the ends here, it doesn't always actually space, so you're going to have to pull it a bit at the ends. Usually this end is, this one didn't, this one came out pretty good. So there's my inner coil. So for the outer coils, we're going to use the 3 8 rod. It's through a 3 8 hole in the wood. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, so I got my wire through the hole in the board. The, that 90 degree bend in the wire there does two things. One, it, it tensions the wire coming on to the, when you coil it here. The other thing is if, if the wire has got some crooks or bends in that, by bending that around the corner and pulling it around, it, it gets rid of those, uh, those uh, little kinks. So I gotta get behind the hole to stick that into. And start up, you wanna get the wire right against the board to start, otherwise it rolls on top of itself. Now for the inside coils, uh, I'm looking for five inches. A smaller coil, so I'll go about, again, about five and three eighths. It'll give me a little extra on this end. To... Now this end, I don't need a lot of wire probably, but I like to have extra that I can cut off later, so I leave it long. And then uh, when we go in the bucket, we're gonna need that sort of fold it back and forth to, so it's not out of the way. And when you fold that back and forth, it makes it easy to to pull this off. So I'm unrolling that till I get five inches. Still got five and an eighth there. Actually, that's pretty good right there. So that's my outer coil for the in, in small coils. Now I gotta stretch it out to get some spacing in the on the coil. And there we go. Piece of cake. Just want to give you a little update on uh, winding my coils. I got uh, some washers uh, screwed on there. Uh, gives me an automatic spacing as I wind my coils. I've got my two sizes, the 3 8 and the 3 16 So that got my wire threaded in there. We just uh, wind this around and uh, turn it 9 degrees out to go in the chuck of the drill. We'll slide that through, ready to chuck on the drill. Okay, the drill's in reverse, wire's on the top of the, the shaft there. It's running behind the washers and then it comes out in front of the washer. It gives me that space. So there I got my 11 inches that I wanted, so we'll take the drill off. And then it's just a matter of sliding that, sliding that bar out. And the coil comes out from underneath. Okay, here's another way to get your uh, spacing in between your wires all nice and even. I got a, a cop, piece of half inch copper pipe here that I flattened out. It's got a little 3 16 half diameter notch in there for the which is the size of my rod I'm using and uh, you just stick that in there and hold it tight to the thing while you uh, operate the drill and you end up with a nice even uh, even coil okay my first plasma reactor I built I, I just gave the coils a slight stretch uh, and I, uh, the outside coil there is 115 millimeters in diameter uh, inside the inner coil there's barely room for, well there wasn't room for a ping pong ball so I just got a neck off a bottle and uh, glued it in there. Uh, so that one's a little bit on maybe on the small side, the tight side. 
and probably is uh, not sure I got the, all the gants into the inner coil and stuff when I when I gants that one. Um, earlier I showed you that video with the with the, the washer here to get my even spacing while I was uh, doing the coils. And with that, you get 100. That, that washer was 1.1 millimeters thick, and I got a coil of 165 millimeters. I think that one's probably too big. It uh, gives you uh, lots of space between the coils and fairly big in the center. So I'm not sure what the ideal is. I tried another one with 0.65 uh, millimeter spacer. This was just a piece of three quarter inch copper pipe I flattened out. Uh, it was 0.65 millimeters thick and it gave me a coil of 150 and then with a 0.5 millimeter copper spacer gave me a coil of 135 millimeters which was uh, bigger than the 115 that I made my first reactor out of so that's the sort of the diameter you get depends on the space you put between your wires